one solution. And the uh, stiffness here in the equipment there is 100,000 kilonewtons per meter. I'll select those two points there. Nine copies of, of all these um, all these beams across the width of the deck, so we'll end up with um, ten longitudinal beams in all. So that's tools, copy, or increment. Now I could I could uh, just type in the increment there. But, uh, another way to do it is click on set by points. Click on the two nodes representing the distance you want to copy across. And I want nine copies. And I want to copy the beams. So click on that the beam icon. And I'll press Control A to select all the beams. Three to see the whole thing. So now we, we've almost completed the model there. The only thing is we've got um, these transverse beams up the top here uh, we don't need. We just need them between the longitudinal beams. So I'll select those, uh, all those beams and click this to it. Okay. Um, Next thing we need to do is uh, to apply properties for the three, di three different property types. So we'll go into the property menu, beam, and for the beam type one is the longitudinal precast beams. So for material, I'll select concrete and 50 MPA. So that automatically fills in the modulus Poisson's ratio density, which is the uh, important one I need. And I need to define the cross section. So click on geometry, click on that uh, empty box. So now to um, import the, uh, the cross section which we uh, generated uh, earlier, click on BXS. The one we created, so that's the one we need, beam section 2A. Click on open. So we can now see that cross section, which is the one we wanted. And we click on assign shear area and then assign. So that's, that's beam type 1. We also need uh, the other two beams. So uh, beam type 2. It's mm. also concrete, but because it's in situ concrete, we'll use 40 MPA. Okay. And for the cross section. So beam type 2. Is representing a, a, a head beams which connect the longitudinal beams uh, across the width of the deck. So it's a <coughs> rectangular cross section. And the um, width is one meter and the depth is uh, 0.95. I'll also select these boxes here. These options actually make a very little difference, but um, I, uh, um, it's, it makes the analysis very slightly slower, but hardly different. So I normally uh, select those and then click on the side. And then finally for uh, property type 3. Uh, go through the same process, but um, a shortcut is we can click on the copy from icon, select copy type 2, 
because this will also be 40 MPa concrete, and then we just need to change the cross section. So this is representing the top slab, which is uh, two meters wide for each of, each of these beams, and the depth is 0.2. So click on the sign. Um, now, so we've assigned those properties. At the moment, we can't see them. But if I, if I right click on the icon over here, um, okay, so it's already got solid selected. If you have lines selected there, just click on solid. And then uh, I'll press F3 to read your. Now, um, we're looking down the scan, we can't see things very clearly. I'm going to press the F4 screen, which lets me rotate the view so I can look for an angle. And we can see what the, the computer doesn't know which way is, is the vertical ground model. And it's actually aligned all these uh, precast beams on their side, and also these top slab beams, and all the end beams also. Um, but it's not most obvious for the top slab, they've been aligned as though they were vertical when they should be two meters horizontal. So we need to rotate all these beams through 90 degrees to get them rotated and aligned in the correct way. And to do that, go to the Tools menu, Align, beam axes and we want the beam number two axis aligned with the Z global axis because Z is the vertical direction and we want uh, uh, vertical upwards so uh, direction positive is, is okay so um, press control A to select all the beams and apply So we can see the, the green transverse beams more clearly. With the right click and select view options. Right click and uh, show by type property. And unselect beam property one. Apply. And now we can see that the uh, transverse beams are all aligned horizontally um, as they should be, because they're representing a horizontal flat slab. So I'll turn the beam type 1 back on, click OK. And uh, now right click on the beam icon over here. Uh, and I'll want to dis display those as a line rather than solid. Click on there. I left click by mistake, which hit them. So, so our, um, our model is almost complete. One final thing we need to do, and I'll just press F3 so we can see the whole thing. At the moment, our um, the ends of our beams are, are restrained in the vertical direction, <coughs> but there's nothing stopping them from moving horizontally or rotating. So what we need to do is apply some horizontal restraints to some of these nodes. And we should just apply the minimum restraints which will stop it uh, moving horizontally. So the way to do that is to go to its attributes node restraint. And one node will restrain in the x and y direction. <coughs> so I'll apply that to node 1. So that will stop the whole model moving about um, in the horizontal plane. It can still rotate about the vertical axis. 
So to stop that horizontal uh, rotation, uh, one node of the strain in my direction. So with this uh, node, oh. I want to um, sorry, restrain that in the x direction. And then this a node down here I will restrain the wire edge. Okay, so that will stop the uh, normal rotating and the spring stop it moving in the, in the vertical direction. So uh, at this stage I'll, I'll save the model. Okay, yeah, let's that, just go set three again. Okay. I um, thought I'd accidentally denoted, deleted the beam down there, but uh, I just needed to redraw them all. So that looks okay. Final stage before we try a run is go to the tools menu and uh, down the bottom there's a clean, clean mesh option. Uh, sometimes when you're generating a model you can get duplicate nodes or you can duplicate uh, members. So it's a good idea to clean the model before you run it for the first time. So click on apply. And but in this case it says no changes were made, which means everything's okay. So finally we'll uh, run a, an analysis just with the uh, dead load. So we'll go to solver. We run a non-linear analysis. Okay, don't worry about that message. That, 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 I'm just getting that because uh, I've uh, been run, um, uh, running a file which I've, I've used before. If you start it from scratch, you shouldn't you should get that. So I'm going to uh, settings. So I run a diagram and I want to see pending one, plane two. Um, okay. So um, I, I should be getting uh, Depending on in the in the other direction. So let me shut that down. And I'll check my uh, check my low low case. So go to the global global green cases. Low case. Okay. I um, when I selected the gravity. Should have been gravity minus z. So I want gravity to be acting downwards. 